This is a critical time in the last couple of weeks as well. Um, building chemistry, getting familiar with the guys. Um, obviously, anytime you're traded midseason, sometimes you're just hoping to fit in, you know what I mean, and uh, not rock the boat. Now it's kind of about uh, establishing, building the arc, I guess, in, in a biblical sense. Yeah. Um, I, I don't really see myself filling uh, Jalen's role per se, right? I think if you look at the team uh, holistically, uh, Jalen's a great playmaker, uh, scored about 16, 17 points a game. I think Tim historically is around that 15 uh, per game or so mark. So in theory, right, you're, you're replacing offensive production there. You're trying to, uh, we got a little bit bigger we, um, and more talented with Christian Wood and JaVale McGee, obviously. Uh, in terms of rim protection, Christian Woods' versatility, be able to play the four to five, step out, shoot threes, all, as well as play above the rim. And then um, for me, I mean, it's going to be go out there and make plays. Remember, Jay Kidd last year said, you know, get a ball to Luca, JB, and then Spencer and, and let them make plays and everybody else do their job. I think um, now, obviously, volume goes up, but mentality doesn't necessarily change. Um, there were a lot of games I finished games. Um, there were games I played without Luca or without JB uh, where I started as well. So um, in terms of mentality, you know, uh, green means go, go make plays, um, try to win the game. Hey Spence, last year at this time, you were coming back from an injury and yeah. your, your way up. This year, you've seen the social media, you've been working yeah. out real hard, working out with KD. Yeah. You talk about your off season this year going into the Mavericks as opposed to last year going into Washington. Oh, I mean, it's night and day. Um, it, it's not even remotely close. Obviously last year was a rehab year. Um, you know, I got cleared to play ACL, uh, from the ACL in five months. Um, I think first game was eight or so months away from surgery. Now we're, whatever, another year, 20 months uh, out, outside from that. So, you know, if you ask anybody that's been through any major injury, um, to even be able to come back that quickly is definitely a testament to the work, but it's just completely different being almost two years removed. Uh, it's, it's night and day, and, you know, all of you guys, I'm sure, have had some type of experience in, in that realm. So it's a normal off season, full training load, not worried about swelling or taking a break or two days on and one day off. It's just, you know, let, let, let's get to it. So how much have you, Casey Smith, talked about, you know, back to backs or load management? Do you feel like your minutes can increase significantly? Mm -hmm. Um, I, I know the Mavericks in general um, consistently watch minutes for all, all players. Uh, I haven't had any specific conversations. I think historically, if you look at my career um, in the NBA, people talk about injuries, but it's actually kind of a misnomer. Um, my first two seasons when I didn't play, that was DNP coach decisions. Wasn't hurt. I just, yeah, they just, they just thought it wasn't good enough. So, you know, it is what it is. And then, you know, from, from years three through eight, right, I only missed one season. That was obviously the very apparent ACL season. But... Other than that, I mean, when I got to the Nets, I think first year I played 51 out of like 54 games. You know, next season I played like 70 some. One game, one season I played like 81. You know, the next year, the COVID year, I think it was, I played all 65 pre bubble games and I caught COVID. So, you know, that was kind of, that was when everybody thought you were going to die with COVID. You know, now, no, 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 no jokes. Like, it was when I caught it, everybody was like, oh, no, like, you know, what's going to happen to his heart and all this other stuff. So it was like a serious thing. Um, now, I mean, obviously it's more so like you'll be all right in a week. But yeah, so I think in terms of worrying about injuries or anything of that nature, uh, it is not has not really ever been my focus in the NBA. And and given a good off season with the guys that I've been able to train with, uh, I mean, shoot, I feel feel one hundred percent healthy. So I'm, I'm happy. And if they choose to send me back to backs, that's on them. Um, and I'm sure we'll have a plan, but we haven't talked about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's been nice to see Tim get back out there, obviously, uh, from his foot injury. I think um, it's been nice to see uh, Jaden Hardy play. Uh, I think he's got a lot of wiggle to his game. Um, if you guys saw him on Instagram, he had a couple of days where he was, uh, you know, getting some buckets. Um, overall, I think having everybody be in the gym, locked in, bought in, in shape, all that, um, and the only person missing being, um, obviously, Luka, but seeing him lead his team in uh, – in Euro basketball, it just it, I think it bodes well for the start of the season. I think nobody wants to have a slow start like last year. You know, what I mean, I wasn't here for that, but uh, it's definitely something that was talked about. As a veteran with this team, what 
Uh, oh man, revival. Uh, I mean, no, no, no. Look, I, I, I completely understand. I know uh, narratives are part of uh, how, how this thing works. Uh, they sometimes conflict with how you view yourself internally. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I would never have considered my career dead. Like to, to me, I think that over overall has been a resounding success, right? Like, you know, I was probably a hundred, I was like 140th in my high school class. It wasn't McDonald's, anything like that. Uh, went to Colorado over Harvard. Um, so not recruited by many blue bloods outside of UCLA. Uh, you know, by the end of my freshman year, I was what runner-up freshman of the year to Tony Roden, who had a phenomenal rookie year at Washington. Was on draft boards by then, had you know another solid season, still on draft boards as a sophomore year. Went back, you know, tore my ACL. It is what it is, um, which I guess started the injury narrative. Uh, was relatively healthy most of my career. Had a season average twenty points. Should have made the All Star team, you know. But name names and things, whatever. But you know, overall, I mean, I, I don't, I don't look at it that way. Um, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to uh, try to co-pilot with a top five, probably player in the NBA, and try to improve upon last year. And I think we have the talent to do that. And I'm just looking forward to it. You guys were a Final Four team last year. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you guys were regarded that way nationally? Uh, you know, or do you feel like? Uh, collectively, of course, right? We fell short. We didn't win a championship, right? So there, there's always going to be another step to take and, and more to prove. I think um, that just kind of comes with the fact that, like I said, we have a top five player and no other player has made an all-star team. So, you know, if you look at it like that, even though that's probably familiar to the Mavs fan base and, you know, the MFFLs believe in us, um, it, it's, it's not something that's probably going to get as much uh, recognition nationwide. Uh, just from the standpoint of you, you're used to seeing two, three, Max guys on a roster and them kind of uh, leading that team. So I, I think that's probably why uh, there's a disconnect between maybe local and national. But overall, I think if, if we can have another season like last year and obviously not lose to Golden State, then, you know, we, we continue to build upon what we did. So since you've been in Dallas, like this is the best you've shot uh, behind the arc. Yeah. How much of that is just personal improvement? How much is the shots you're taking? Is there some another factor that, that would have amplified it over, over the past few months? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, obviously everybody continues to improve as, as they get older and their game grows. But a lot of that probably has to do with the team. Um, this is probably the best spacing that I play with in my career. Um, just looking at all the different guys on the roster, you know, nobody really wants to leave. Um, playing with, obviously, Lou is going to keep his man. Uh, Bullock, they don't want to leave him when he's in, you know, shooting position, Doe the same way. Obviously, uh, you know, DP, um, I know he gets a lot of flack sometimes, but he was one of the best live catchers in the league. Right. And then you bring Maxi in. He's a great floor spacer. I mean, he's one of the main reasons we were able to beat Utah. You know, he, he made Gobert think twice about, you know, coming in to, to block shots. And so that really puts you on a like clear and present island. Like sometimes, uh, you know, on, on other teams and spacing is not the same. Um, and that's throughout my career. It's just personnel based. Right. It's no shot at them or anything like that. It's just, you know, sometimes teams come together and they're conducive to talent. And. I think in terms of like my specialty is being able to play one on one. I think like that's what I've done throughout my career in terms of advanced statistics and stuff like that. Like typically in the you know top five or so in that in the, in the league. So that makes my job a lot easier uh, when there's far less help defense. What was your mindset? What made the decision to choose Colorado and Harvard? I think most people might do that So basically, it just came down to basketball. Um, I, I wanted to go to Pac-12, I wanted to go to the NBA. I know that going to Harvard probably meant it was going to be, if I did go to the NBA, a four-year journey versus, uh, you know, possibly leaving in two, which I had the opportunity to do at Colorado. So that's really all I came down to at the end of the day. But those are the two, like, very clear choices for me. Does your mindset have to be different when you go from a bench role to, say, a starter role? And, and what aspects to your game, specifically skill set-wise, did you work on this offseason? Um, maybe more smoothies going from a bench role to a starting role, being that I am the smoothie king. Um, it's probably uh, the, the main difference. Um, and then what I work on this off season, uh, I, I took a lot of time on my body to, to begin with. Um, 
just because obviously you're going to continue to work and, and having been off a long season, ACL, all that stuff, being very diligent about those pieces. Um, and then, you know, just the, just the typical spot of shooting and being able to play with Luka. And then, of course, one on one for when he's not uh, in there. And, you know, reads and making plays happen in the five on five and, you know, just not turn the ball or stuff like that. Yeah, well, Um, I think it comes down to chemistry. I think what made last year's team so special was uh, the chemistry that it had and how like the sum of its parts became better than any individual talent. Um, and, and you know, I kind of listed out our, our roster already in terms of uh, swapping out production possibly and you know where we can be more talented and, and what we lost. Um, if you look at it holistically, we should be better um, on paper, uh, but it comes down to how we kind of mesh as a group and. That's, that's down to the people in the locker room. Spencer, going into your first full year with this team, how much more of a voice and presence do you want to have when it comes to assisting with the leadership of this group knowing that you're a veteran in this league? Um, I mean, I, I think that's a, a very big part, right? Stepping into a starting role, you you understand where we went, having that experience, uh, playing West Conference Finals. And so, yeah, it's definitely a, a piece of the equation in terms of stepping into that leadership role and, and, and helping guide some of the younger guys for sure.